All right, welcome back. It's time for us to get into the news review segment. And uh, today we're going to be looking at some stories making headlines in the papers. Now we have a fight against corruption, uh, some more Nekwe Tete, but by GLC for collecting 400,000 400, Ghana cities from Woyume. Now the, the uh, Republic Press says here, Woyume is mad at GLC, uh, threatens legal battle as um, he rejects bribery allegations. So we'll get into that story. Um, also, uh, Baumia to announce his campaign team this week. Um, and then poor road infrastructure. Quite a number of papers carrying that. We have from the Anchor, we have the Ghanaian Times, um, all carrying the story. 150 million uh, Ghana cities to patch portals. Is it enough? Is it a little a le too little, too late? Well, we're going to delve into those stories. But let me introduce my guest to you this morning. I have joining me on the set uh, this morning. I have with me the executive director for ASEPA, um, the Alliance for Social Equity and Public Accountability, Mensa Thompson, as well as Jeffrey Capote Okansi. He is uh, the executive director for Revenue Mobilization Africa. Gentlemen, you are both welcome. To Thank you. A very good morning to yeah. all of you. How are you doing? And then let me quickly use. Uh, this opportunity to mm. say a happy birthday to my brother Dan Kanamwa. Uh, today is his birthday. Dan Kanamwa. Yes. Happy sir. happy birthday to yes. you. Yes. Yeah. And and to add that uh, he's he's married. Yeah. He's a married man. Yeah. Happily married man, yeah. uh, Mr. Dan Kanamwa. Yeah. We wish you all the best. Many years. He's 43 years old today. Oh, he's a young man. Yeah. 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 Very very young. Yeah. Man. God has blessed him, yeah. I mean, to be where he is at yeah. this age. I yeah. mean, and, um, Duncan, good morning. Yes. Happy birthday to you. We want to celebrate his contribution to the, the <coughs> petroleum industry. Yeah, COPEC. I mm. mean, he's been very vibrant mm. in terms of advocacy in the mm. space. Mm. In, and and as, especially for us consumers, yeah. you know, they've been fighting for us. It's led a charge and always making sure that you and I could buy fuel mm. Mm. at reasonable, you know, reasonable prices. Yeah. And uh, that is the man we are celebrating today yeah. on such a special day. So, Duncan, on this day, we want to say a, happy, a big, big happy birthday to you. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. A very good morning to our viewers, to yeah. you wonderful gentlemen. I wanted to ask, why did he say that Duncan is married? Why did yes, he have to um, oh, he's that married. married. The, you know, he, I posted his picture, and <laughs> the, girls were saying, <laughs> the girls were saying he was handsome. <laughs> You know, so yes. uh, you have to I, declare. I, I just want to put on record so that taken. he's hands, he, he's married uh, and a very so faithful, a very faithful very husband, faithful husband right. very very faithful. So, 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 he, so you should stop all those comments. He, <laughs> does, he, he, he doesn't like that at all. The streets have heard you. Yeah, he's so taken. But I mean, talking about Duncan, it's yeah. also important to say that uh, over the weekend, fuel prices went up. Yes, yes. 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 So yes. I, I think the names have become yes. numb. Yeah. with some of the issues mm. you know mm. some time ago it was actually periodical like you know you could see fuel rise quarterly or maybe doing a half or annually but this time around you know it it, it hit us so much that now when actually fuel prices go up mm. you don't really see people making a big deal of it you know so i mean i mean talk, talking about don't can don't can happy birthday but also look at our three percent or something increment and see if you can do something you know but then I also heard about the late, the, the, the late reshuffle. Mm. It's late in the day, but you know, sometimes better late than never, mm. you know, because um, <coughs> uh, like, you remember at the start of this year, mm. in our, one of our discussions, I mentioned that I am still hopeful that if the president yeah. decides to do something about some of the things you mm. said, mm. the last run yeah. is enough. Because a lot of the things we are talking about is just about plucking and saying, look, you come out, you stay in, you, this thing, we're not going to continue with this expenditure again. Yeah. I'm cutting it. Look, Magafuli just cut the celebration of Independence Day. Yes. And the next effect was that hospitals had beds and people were sleeping in hospital beds. So yeah. it takes some quick runs and you can do it. And mm. Manchester United won by two goals to one. So it's been a weekend of watch and smile. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, for for yeah. me in terms yeah. of the reshuffle, yeah. it's garbage yeah. in, garbage out. It's our home. Garbage right. in, garbage yeah. out. I mean, we, we, I mean, my my key expectation was that there was going to be a streamline of the ministries. Right. So, for example, if you remove somebody from a ministry and replace the person, 
and you take the person to the presidency, what yeah. have you done? Actually, and especially in a certain sense, it looks as if the budget would increase yes. because there seems to be some new people would have come in to join yes, some of you. Yes, you know. and I move, move old people to the presidency, yeah. especially with that of Ken Foyata. You know, you move the guy from finance ministry and you make him uh, ad advisor at the presidency. Yeah, but he's not the only one. I was there Estena, with you. Estena, Estena, Estena but but some of it looked like a demotion, though. To still, to yeah. still. Some look like a demotion. Really? To yeah, still, to still. Like, if, if you were a national you know, security chief and you actually go to the uh, seat of government uh -huh, as uh -huh. an advisor, I mean, a minister of state. But advisor me, is above. Uh, well. Security chief. Oh, really? Oh. If you have a whole ministry no, managing... I mean, what if you're in a jubilee house? I but what informed the decision... What informed you, the, uh, exactly what informed though, the decision they, to take Ojo Ponkoma to housing? Works in housing. <coughs> yes. <coughs> and what informed the decision to take a Japamesa to creative arts? I'm even arts thinking Kojo will still maybe... We, maybe they will explain to us. <laughs> Are they going to go to parliament? I was thinking... Are they going to go to good parliament I was at the programme when the vice president spoke last week. They're supposed to be CSOs vetted in parliament, were, right? Yes, mm. they will be. Okay. They will be vetted. Yes. They'll be vetted. And, 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 and the presidency, there's also the legal bit with the presidency trying to reassign ministers when they know that that's, it's a whole new appointment and it must be subject to parliamentary yeah. approval. Yeah. And they, they are trying to use the back door to prevent some of the ministers from attending. Like the minister of finance? Yes. No, for going to vetting. For example, some people were deputy ministers who have yeah, been like, Is it the minister appointed. of finance? He was a deputy? Yeah, the, one, the current minister. The yes. current minister. Yes. Yes. He's yes. a deputy, so yes. it's more the like it. yeah. Who have been appointed as ministers. Yeah. Right. And the constitution is very clear. As soon as the, the president revokes your appointment and appoints you again, yeah. you need to it's, go a, it's a whole new appointment. <coughs> yeah. you, you must be vetted and subject to the parliamentary you know, procedure. Anyway. And so any attempt to sidestep those things will also not be countenanced. We, we are willing to challenge this. I hope the Ghanaian process court. won't stop where we want yeah. like quick work mm. and there may be this process of vetting and maybe changeovers. Yes. I think they should be very real quick about yeah. it. And I think so. We action. don't have time. So. Yeah, let's yeah. see some action. Anyway, let's get right into the stories from today. We want to start with the uh, will you make mad at the GLC. Now the story here basically is someone equated has been barred by the GLC for collecting 400,000 um, Ghana CDs. Um, from William. Now, businessman, and then the story is from the Republic Press. I'm going to read it. It's on page three of the paper. The businessman, uh, Fred Agbishi William, has announced his intention to take legal action against the General Legal Counsel for disqualifying member, uh, former Chief State Attorney uh, Samuel Nekwe Tete in his case related to the 51 million Waterville judgment debt. Now, uh, William, a central figure in the case, believes that the council's decision constitutes contempt of court and is aimed at him. And now, uh, he argues that the previous judicial decisions have cleared him and others involved in the contract of any wrongdoing. Now, Nequitete's license was revoked after he was found to have breached professional and conduct standards in the legal profession. Now, in response to the council's decision, William expressed his disappointment and maintained that the 400,000 Ghana CD uh, transferred to Nequitete's wife was purely f for humanitarian purposes through his foundation, Wilmy Foundation for Africa. Now, he stated, thank God that we have got all the judgments. I pledge on my honor that I will remain very active to make sure that the institution of government do the right thing. Wuyumi confirmed his plans to take the General Legal Counsel to court in the coming week uh, to address the situation. We will pursue GLC and the AG for them to stop what they're doing. Nekwe Tete's wife, wife's money that I sent to her was on the basis of what I do at WOFA. That's a Wilmy Foundation for Africa. I pay fees and pay other people things for many, and pay other things for many people across the whole African uh, country. That's what he said. I don't know whether it's Ghana or African continent. Uh, well, uh, he said, when I work that that is what i use my money for philanthropy he explained so that's the story here let me start with you mr thompson um where are we going with this i thought this issue was dead and buried now uh, someone has been disbarred um 
is it a case of sour grapes? Is it witch hunting? Is it something that's above board? I, I don't know what you make of what's going on here. Yes, thank you very much, and good morning to our viewers once again. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I don't know what is this government's obsession with this Wyoming case. Mm. Um, I have followed this case for quite a while, and um, as an anti-corruption activist, it's one of the cases I took serious interest in, mm. and as as activists and as think tanks, what we do basically is that we don't follow the hefty propaganda on the streets, but mm. we like to dig into the issues and find out whether indeed um, there is cause for advocacy yeah. to ensure that the interest of the state is protected or whether we need to activate our human rights mm. aspect of the advocacy. And in, in respect of the Wyoming case, I think that there's a huge injustice that has been perpetrated over time, which, um, which for me and for us at ASEPA, it's very, very, very unfair. And it's inimical to the fight against corruption itself mm, mm. because you don't want to muddy the waters. Corruption is a very serious issue. And so if you want to fight it, you need to set clear standards. You need to ensure you know, that proper procedures are adhered to. You need to ensure the principles of natural justice, mm. fair hearing, yeah. and all those things are properly adhered to so that when we are punishing people, we know that the state has taken the necessary steps to ensure that all the right things are being done. Mm. Now, what is this whole disbarment of uh, Nekwe about? I want to say that the decision taken by the GLC was extremely unfair and capricious. Mm, why? The, you remember when this Wyomi case broke? Alfred Wyomi was arrested yeah. by the state. Yeah. Iyoko led the charge in the investigation. Iyoko led the prosecution. Now, Iyoko did their preliminary investigations, which they indicted Alfred Wyomi, they indicted Nekwe Tete and a few others. Mm -hmm. The case went for trial at the High Court. When the case got to the High Court, the High Court, after scrutinizing all the evidence before it, came to the conclusion that neither Woyomi or Nekwe Tete or any other official was guilty of any offense, of defrauding by false pretense, of causing financial loss to the state, of collusion, all those you know, allegations mm. were cleared at the High Court. Okay. It subsequently went to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal also upheld the decision of the High Court. And so, both Alfred Woyomi and Nekwe Tete has been cleared by the High Court and the mm. Court of Appeal of any wrongdoing. And in fact, in the High Court and Court of Appeal decision, the Court of Appeal have said that all officials, government officials, yeah. who worked on the Wyoming case were responsible, did due diligence, and ensure that they did not violate their professional responsibilities. And I would, if you allow me, I would like to read portions of what the Court of Appeal and the High Court have said in, in, in this matter. Okay. Just, just briefly, so that our viewers can understand. So, if you read here, this is this is the this is the, uh, the High Court judgment, dated 12 day of March 2015. And this is the High Court saying that it is my considered view, given the complexity of the work involved, that securing the financing in question, in question, that the claim of two two percent, that the money was paid paid effort was due legitimate. My Lord, the Attorney General who was new in office and lacked the institutional history of events that had led, that had already taken place, believed various misrepresentations made by the accused persons and thus took it upon herself to push for monies being claimed by the accused to be paid. One, I think that the submission is not born out of evidence on record. The head of, the, the head of legal finance ministry wrote his view justifying the payment. There were other persons who met to deliberate on the petition. The decision 
was not wholly taken by the then minister, Honorable Betimo de Dresu. Mm. So, if, this is the High Court speaking, that the then Attorney General, Honorable Betimo de Dresu, did not unilaterally take a decision mm. to pay monies to Mr. Yeah. Woyomi. Yeah. And that she took steps, did background checks. And so, if the Attorney General, who was the final person who wrote a legal opinion advising the government on this matter, mm. was not you know, uh, uh, um, um, convicted or was not, you know, uh, was cleared of any wrongdoing, yeah. how then does a subordinate who works under him, okay, mm. a subordinate who works under him, now being indicted? Now, the report the General Legal Council based on to take the decision was the IOCO investigation report, which this High Court and the Court of Appeal have set aside. And so, the entire activity by, done by the General Legal Council was, a, was extremely subjudicated because the High Court, after scrutinizing all the evidence available before it, at the Court of Appeal, justices scrutinized all the evidence available before it, came to a decision that there was no wrongdoing. And in fact, the, the evidence they scrutinized included the payment of 400,000 Ghana cities by Alfred Woyomi to Mr. Nekwetete's wife, which the evidence on record suggested that it was a loan, there was a contract on, on, on the money. The, in fact, at the time of the investigation, there were evidence that Mrs. Nekwe had started paying back the money to Alfred Woyomi. I see. And so, and so, how then does the General Legal Council then with this evidence and the decision of the Court of Appeal and the High Court come back 12 years down the line to say that they've taken a decision to bar, to disbar Mr. Nekwe Tete. For me, it's extremely unfair, it's unjust, and I'm surprised that lawyers in this country are quiet. Now, if you look, if you look at the procedural aspect of this matter, it leaves, it begs a lot of questions. First of all, the General Legal Council failed woefully to consider the closing address by the, by the accused, Mr. Nekwe Tete. They failed to consider the witness statement by Mr. Alfred Woyomi, who is an interested party, because if you're alleging bribery, there's a giver and a taker. And so if you convict the, the, the taker, definitely it's an indictment on, 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 on the giver. Wrote, in fact, provided evidence to the General Legal Council, which was not also considered. Mm. And so it was clearly set out that the General Legal Council set out to achieve one aim in mind. And they went, uh, 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 they just went to take a decision to disbar or to punish Mr. Nekwe Tete. I mean, which is a clear fault, the principle of Jobu Jopadi. Look, do you know that it was the Attorney General that went to court to file a nolly prosequi on the case against Nekwe Tete? And so, you see, the, the contradictions of the state's position in this matter, mm. the principles of natural justice, which has been clearly violated, you know, by the General Legal Council, and the obsession, and the General Legal Council being used as a tool. If you look at the statement, the General Legal I've read the judgment on this Nekwe case. And for me, as a student of the law, this is frivolous. Now, look at the, look at the statement issued by the General Legal Council. I mean, if you issue, if you if you take a decision, mm. okay, you've sat on the case. All the general has to do is to communicate its judgment out. If you read how the statement of the general legal council itself was carved, it was as if the general legal council was set out to achieve some propaganda rhetoric. It was set to push a particular agenda, okay. and 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 that subsequently <coughs> had influenced the wrongful media report that has ensued. Mm. And for me, I think that this matter, um, I, 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 I mean, I, I'm, I'm appealing to the Ghana Bar Association. They should not allow this disbarment to, start, to stand because it's going to set a very bad precedent. If anybody, if all lawyers in this country are going to be disbarred or subject to such severe punishment based on this, this evidence, then the precedent I don't think there's any lawyer okay. that can, that can right. survive this. Right. Just a second and I'll wrap up. Just a, so I'm appealing to the Ghana Bar Association. 
please, the Ghana Bar Association should not be a dormant institution. It must be seen as an institution that is advocating for the interest of its people. The evidence and the circumstances behind the disbarment of Mr. Samone Kuitete cannot stand in this regard. Right. The Ghana Bar Association Thank must you. come out very strongly and, and, and ask the General Legal Council to reverse the decision. Of course, we must uphold ethical standards in the profession. Of course, we must advocate for that. Yeah. But that okay. must not undermine the principles fair of national justice. Thank you. You know, fair hearing yeah. and also promoting the interest of justice delivery. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you mm. for the opportunity. Real quick on this one, mm. on the matter of uh, um, the GLC and uh, what, Mr. Wyomi. I think uh, Wyomi has the court to call on and wait for justice. I think the legal counsel also have their day in court if Wyomi takes this case. These are the real issues. Look, I, I think why face the the, 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 the the laws of the land and the courts and he was judged mm. and so he was put in a box. So perceptions around why me has been one line. You know, so some, some people might misjudge this issue. But um, I think the legal counsel, the Ghana Bar Association, they have rules and they have ethics. Mm. If, if it, I'm sure they also have thought through yeah. some of these rules and ethics, and that's how come they took this action. I, I think that um, if the if the, the 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 courts ordered him to actually maybe leave the matter, or they might even fine him if mm. the YMA is wrong. But usually, when the other side turns to the table, I want to see people who took these decisions like members of a general legal council, how, what, what happens to them? Mm. Is it only that we record it as an error or something? No. In no. other countries, some people are asked to step down. You have to resign honorably. For one case that went wrong, yeah. you should step down. And so, like, you know, we shouldn't see it as a normal error. Look, when, when judges and those senior people in the, in the legal realms make mistakes, it takes people's life. Oh. It does, yeah. My late uncle, during the days of <coughs> tribunal, mm. my mother stood in at, at you know, where, where, that place that we used for the banquet hall. This is a, a very hurting family issue, I'm telling you. Mm. So my mother had the power to State stand. House. State house. Mm. It used to be the tribunal grounds. Mm. My mother had the power to stand and tell the judge. The judge was a mate of my uncle, but you know, he was allowing their processes to go on. The day they were coming to call the matter, he called, he called the matter and said, my uncle was actually innocent. But the man died hmm. out of pain. Yes. So wow. my mom stood and broke up with protocols and told them the man you are freeing is dead. So some of these matters, it affects people's thinking, it affects families, it affects images. So if you come back and say, look, um, uh, Wyoming, the the is clear, the money must stay. It shouldn't end there. We should climb further. People must be made to resign. And if it costs, I'm looking carefully at judgment debt or something that turns around. When it comes at the state, maybe there was a poor judgment, and people must be made to pay. We have to surcharge people after taking certain decisions. Mm. So, I mean, let's yeah, follow uh, through. Alfred, just a quick one. You know, Mr. Neko Tete was not a lawyer on this case on record. He was not involved in the decisions that uh, uh, th that led to the payment of the money. He was not a lawyer on the case. So, for example, my brother, if if uh, uh, somebody has a case with CTFM, maybe uh, and with CTFM, and you a worker, you are not involved in the transaction. You are not working on the transaction, and your wife enter into a private arrangement with the person. First of all, to establish conflict of interest, you must prove that yes. The person put himself in a situation where his private interest could conflict with, the, with his professional responsibilities. Right. This time around, the guy had no professional responsibility on that particular case. But, but that's why I've, I've stated that like, clearly, when, when, like you stated rightly, I mean, I believe in letting, for, for the way forward, I, I propose, the courts must be allowed to work. Mm. You know, sometimes I, I tell people, when I see people going to court, that's the beauty of democracy. That's the beauty of our legal systems. Testing of our laws. Let the courts work. No man is above the law. I mean, let us all face the courts. This back and forth raised in this matter, it questions the, the, the competence of our Yoko. 
mm. our CID and our other investigative bodies and our courts. Look, respect to all these institutions I've mentioned, but you would expect that a matter like this yeah. should be within their catch. Nequitete's wife, Nequitete's uh, siblings, some people around. If you wanted to investigate and question all these people, they were all around for you. Look, we are paying people money. People have cars that they are moving around with. They have motorolas. The people are sitting in air conditions with all state allowances to them. And this matter, the man Wyoming, he didn't run anywhere. He was around. It is about documents. Pick the documents and cross-check. With all respect to them, these right. are basic issues we could have done. Mm. I mean, we can, we, we can free ourselves of this, you know, calling for which and this is the, look, the Bar Association, a member is going through this. What's your take on it? Yeah. Nothing. Can, can there be a, a talk? Nothing. Look, We've let's never allow... heard from them. So finally, I'll tell you, when it comes to recouping losses, mm. you will see that, like, even though I understand where uh, my brother's pain is, and then when it affects one, it affects all. It could be, t tomorrow it could be me, or it could be him. That's why he's worried. But when I hear recouping losses matter, then I, 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 st I stand firm. And then people talk about um, issues of witch hunting. I've told you the other time, and I'll say it today on this platform again. I don't even want the witch. I'm looking for the devil. <laughs> I am not in for the witches. I'm looking for the devil. And this, I mean, when you go to the files, you realize that there are people who actually break the law once or twice, yeah. and there are the kingpins yeah, who are sitting people. down, the main people who play the game. Let's go for them. So far as the witches and the devils have been proved by the laws, law-abiding citizens, and also providing information yeah. that investigative bodies can prove. Right. Let's prove and ensure that, look, some of these matters, they mm. serve as landmarks. If the man, Wyoming, and his uh, 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 team, they go to court, and it's proven that, look, they have a case. I don't think somebody must just see it as an error. Mm. People right. must be held for their actions. All right. Thank you very much.